Nikola Tesla is a man absent from history books, but who is responsible for futuristic technologies that we still enjoy today. One of the greatest minds of the modern era, his genius really shaped the world as we know it today, uh, pioneering the alternating current, which is the electrical system which powers almost everything uh, around the globe. His influence can be seen all around us, from remote control and radio to wireless communication. And so in this episode, we are going to explore Nikola Tesla's early years and look at some of the interesting moments that shaped him. You are not going to want to miss this episode. You know, it seems that Tesla's mind went beyond conventional technologies as we think of them. Uh, in fact, did you know that Nikola Tesla registered a fascinating patent in 1928? It was patent number 1655144, which details this flying-like machine uh, that strangely resembled uh, both an airplane or helicopter or, as you might say, a UFO. And then before his death, uh, Nikola Tesla developed what he called uh, space drive, which was like an anti-electromagnetic field propulsion system. And uh, one of my favorite Tesla quotes is this. Tesla famously stated, quote, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And so it seems to me that Tesla somehow rediscovered or tapped into some of the same lost ancient technologies that were used by the ancient architects uh, who made the great pyramids and who made many of the megalithic marvels as I call them that uh, were during the golden age or this anti-Tiluvian world. Therefore I believe it's important to uh, study the life of this man. Nikola Tesla. So in this episode, we're going to explore the early years of Tesla's life. And we're going to look at again some of the more interesting moments and the mysteries that shaped him. I think you're really going to find this fascinating. So we're going to, in a nutshell, look at his first 26 years of life uh, from the day he was born till uh, about when he was 26 years old. Okay, so let's dive into Tesla's early life. So Tesla was born July 10th, 1856. He was born in a town uh, near what's called Gospic, I believe, in present day Croatia. He was the fourth of five children. Now, right out of the gate here, it gets crazy. Apparently, Tesla was born at the stroke of midnight, uh, while lightning was also striking during a summer storm. Okay, that's pretty crazy. And apparently the midwife commented, quote, he'll be a child of the storm, end quote. To which his mother replied, quote, no, of light, end quote. Again, right out of the gate, there's so much here we could stop and talk about. Uh, in this video, we don't have time, but in future videos, uh, we'll definitely come back and talk about Tesla's birth. This is crazy. Um, Tesla was baptized in the old Slavonic church, right? His father, Malutin Tesla, was a priest of the Eastern Orthodox Church. I find this very interesting. His father was a priest. Uh, I wonder how much Tesla's faith or his family's faith uh, impacted who he was and who he became. Uh, Tesla's mother, her name was Duka. Uh, apparently, she had a talent for making uh, home craft tools and mechanical appliances and it's said that she had an incredible like photographic memory and that she had the ability to memorize these Serbian epic poems which were these very long uh, poems and uh, rhythmic poems as, as far as we know she had never received a formal education but Tesla credited his photographic memory and his what we would call total recall to his mother's genetics and influence. So we can see here very early that his mom was greatly influencing him. Okay, let's jump to 1863. Uh, Tesla's older brother and his only brother, whose name was Dane, unfortunately died at the age of 12 after falling off a horse. 
and this scarred uh, Tesla. And according to some accounts, uh, there's thought that Tesla may have accidentally uh, caused the horse to get spooked. Um, so I can only imagine how this really impacted his life in a horrific way. 1870, Tesla uh, moved to a different city called uh, Karlovac, I believe is how it's pronounced, to attend high school. And this is where he lived with his aunt and his uncle. Tesla later wrote that he became interested in demonstrations of electricity by his physics professor, uh, whose name was Martin Sekulik. Now, this professor Martin is said to have had a huge influence on uh, Tesla. And Tesla noted that the demonstrations that Martin uh, did uh, of this, quote, mysterious phenomena, end quote, made him want to know more of this wonderful force. So we see Tesla is greatly influenced by this Professor Martin. Tesla, it's said, was known to perform integral calculus in his head, which uh, led many of his other teachers to think that he was cheating. Uh, but he finished a four-year term in three years of high school. In 1873, after graduating, Tesla returned to his hometown, uh, sadly only to contract cholera, and he was bedridden for like nine months and came near death multiple times. Uh, in a moment of despair, apparently his father, who had originally wanted him to uh, enter the priesthood like himself, uh, promised uh, Tesla to send him to the best engineering school if he recovered from the illness. 1874. Uh, Tesla became a fugitive and evaded being drafted into the Hungarian army by running away uh, to another city uh, where he ended up exploring the mountains and was no known for wearing hunter's garb. So uh, he's trying to play the part. I bet he was trying to just disappear and blend in. And so I just find that fascinating that he was wearing, uh, quote, hunter's garb, end quote. And uh, Tesla is on record um, by saying that the contact with nature made him feel stronger, both physically and mentally. And uh, he read many books in the mountains. Um, and he later said that Mark Twain's books uh, really helped him to miraculously recover from his earlier illness. So, so interesting. He's hiding out in the mountains, dressed in hunter's garb, reading Mark Twain. 1875, Tesla uh, enrolled at the Imperial Royal Technical College in Graz. Uh, in, in his autobiography, Tesla said that he worked hard and earned the highest grades possible. And in his first year, he received a letter of commendation from the dean of the technical faculty to his father, which stated, quote, your son is a star of the first rank, end quote. That had to make Tesla feel very proud, uh, especially being that it was sent to his father, I imagine, because you just don't get that his father was as influential in his life as his mother, his uncles that we're going to learn about, and some of these professors. Uh, at Graz, Tesla noted his fascination with the detailed lectures on electricity presented by Professor uh, Jacob Postel, I believe it's pronounced. And Tesla described how uh, he made suggestions on improving the design of an electric motor that this professor was demonstrating. Now, uh, unfortunately, in Tesla's second year at uh, this Imperial Royal Technical College in Graz, uh, Tesla came into conflict with this professor regarding basically the ideas and suggestions Tesla was giving the professor regarding this machine. And so there was conflict, and I think that has a lot to do with, by the end of the second year, Tesla loses his scholarship and apparently goes into some kind of depression, and he takes up gambling. So quite a turn of events. Now, at the end of his third year at this college, uh, Tesla stopped uh, attending lectures altogether and drops out of college. So in 1878... Tesla's family did not hear from him after he left school for a while. 
and they're probably concerned about him because there was a rumor amongst Tesla's classmates at that college that he had drowned in the nearby Muir River. Uh, but in January of 1878, uh, one of these uh, classmates runs into Tesla in the town of Marabor across the border uh, in Slovenia and somehow word gets back to his family that he's alive. So it turns out that Tesla had been working there as a draftsman uh, for an engineering firm. And during this time, uh, he would spend his spare time at a pub called The Happy Peasant, uh, where he enjoyed playing chess and cards. My mind can only imagine uh, back in the day at this Happy Peasant pub, uh, being one of the one of the poor souls, having a beer inside the pub, and uh, playing Nikola Tesla in a game of chess or or cards, uh, if you can imagine. For some reason, I I'm guessing that he might have made some side money uh, in the Happy Peasant. 1879, Tesla's father uh, finally locates his son and tries to convince him to return home and take up his education in Prague. Well, Tesla eventually returns home. Uh, again, the town was called Gospik. Uh, later that month, um, because he was deported for not having a residence permit. Well, it's a good thing he did return home because sadly his father died the very next month, I believe, from when Tesla came back home. So... One can only imagine what that month was like, uh, catching up with his father, spending time together, um, because in April 1879, at the age of 60, his dad died of an unspecified illness. 60 years old, that's so young to pass away. Apparently during the rest of that year, Tesla taught a large class of students in his old school in Gospic. 1880. Two of Tesla's uncles, named Peter and Pavel, uh, they put together money to help Tesla leave Gospic for Prague, where he was to study at Charles Ferdinand University. Again, I find the family dynamics very interesting because we know Tesla's mother was very influential on him. His father sadly dies. We know before he lived with his uncle, and aunt uh, but now his two uncles are coming together it's almost like they realize his father passed away and they're stepping up um, because his father wanted him to study in Prague and now they're saying hey here's some money we're gonna help you get to Prague so uh, Tesla goes to uh, Prague to study at Charles Ferdinand University but unfortunately he arrived too late to enroll. Uh, Tesla did, however, attend lectures uh, in philosophy at the university as an auditor, uh, but he did not receive grades for the courses. It's said that during this time, uh, he spent most of his time in the library and at the local cafe. 1881, uh, Tesla's uncle Pavel arranges for Tesla to move to uh, Budapest, Hungary, to work at a telegraph company. So it's kind of like, you know, the, the college thing didn't quite work out there or the university, he couldn't enroll. And so his uncle saying, hey, let's, let's get you working at this a telegraph company. It was called the Budapest Telephone Exchange, which was owned by Hungarian inventor Tivadar Puskas, I believe is how it's pronounced. So upon arrival, Tesla realizes that the company uh, was basically under construction. It was not functional. And so he worked as a draftsman in the Central Telegraph office. Uh, instead, within a few months, the telephone exchange becomes functional and Tesla um, was moved to the chief electri electrician position. So we see him moving right up the ladder swiftly. And during his employment, Tesla made many improvements uh, to the central station equipment and claimed to have even perfected a telephone repeater or amplifier. 
Uh, this was never patented nor really publicly described, but apparently this was uh, pretty important to Tesla. 1882, Tesla's employer, Tivadar Puskas, owner of the Budapest Telephone Exchange, he basically gets Tesla another job in Paris. Okay, so he must really believe in Tesla because as far as I can tell, he's he's saying, hey, quit working for me and go work for this bigger place in Paris with the Continental Edison Company. Tesla moves to Paris, begins working in what was then a brand new industry, basically installing indoor incandescent lighting citywide in large-scale electrical power utilities. Uh, the company had several subdivisions and Tesla worked at the division in a suburb of Paris and he, he was in charge of installing the lighting systems. So there he gained a great deal of practical experience in electrical engineering. Soon management took notice of his advanced knowledge in engineering and physics and soon had him designing and building improved versions of generating dynamos and motors. So again, he's moving up the ladder. Uh, he's gaining notoriety. Uh, management also sent him out to troubleshoot engineering problems at other Edison utilities uh, being built around France and Germany. So he's becoming known as quite the expert. Again, in 1882, um, we'll end here in this episode. Tesla, he becomes obsessed with solving the riddle of alternating current. And apparently he suffers a mental breakdown to the point where he wasn't expected to even live much longer. Uh, so it must have been very bad. However, Tesla miraculously begins to recover and he's uh, taking a walk in this Budapest city park with a friend named Anthony. And apparently the solution comes to Tesla in a vision in this park while he's walking. In his recollection of the event, Tesla stated that he looked at the setting sun and began to recite a passage from Goethe's Faust, considered uh, by many to be the magnum opus and the greatest work of German literature. So at that very moment, apparently the idea comes to Tesla in a flash of light and he drew the diagram of the motor in the sand with a stick so fascinating and this is really one of the seminal moments in the early years of tesla's life and we'll end here in this episode in part two uh, of this topic we will look at tesla's middle years uh, which started in 1884 when tesla boards a boat to new york and will eventually go on to become one of the greatest inventors of all time well i hope you enjoyed this episode uh, reminder to subscribe to this uh, podcast or platform from wherever you are watching or listening. Uh, and until next time, keep exploring.